Hey, what's up YouTube? So this video is going to be about the pros and cons of a high stall torque converter. So a few people have been in my comment section asking me to make this video, whether or not it is good to buy it for a daily driving application. And so what I'm gonna be talking about is whether it is or not, and that's the pros and cons. And so these are just going to be my opinions of it, and other people can see differently, no biggie. But just take this with a grain of salt. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the bad news out of the way first, I'm gonna go with the cons, I'm gonna tell you the good news, and then I'm gonna give you my opinion to whether or not is it worth it or not to get a high stall torque converter. And also before I get started with this video, if you have no idea what a high stall torque converter is, I do have a video briefly describing it. I will also link other videos as well that go more in depth, but basically those videos are there. That's not what this video is about. So the first thing I don't like about a high stall torque converter is that it doesn't drive like stock. I remember when I was doing my research on getting a high style torque converter for the truck, a lot of people were like, oh, it drives like stock, it's like you don't even notice it, whatever. Well, they're wrong. Obviously it's nothing crazy, but you definitely do notice a difference. It is more loose, and so whenever you're driving normal, it's not too bad. In city driving is not too bad. But if you need to accelerate just a little bit, since my stall is a 3400 RPM, it flashes right up to 3400 and it sounds like I'm hauling ass when I'm really not. And so that is one of the downsides is that it is very loose and it doesn't drive like stock, but it is bearable. And then another bad thing about it is that you could lose gas mileage. And for some reason, this is a controversial topic about modding your vehicle, whether or not it even matters if you lose gas mileage or not. Um, I would have never gotten this torque converter if it made my truck get five miles to the gallon. Depending on your scenario, you could lose gas mileage getting a high stall torque converter, or it could be the exact same. But as far as losing it, the only reason you would lose gas mileage is if you only do city driving, you're in a very hilly area, and you're in traffic a lot. The stops and goes is what kills gas mileage with these high stall torque converters. Um, on the highway, if you get a lockup converter, that is when it's really like stock. It locks up on the highway, you're driving normal, it doesn't flash up to whatever stall speed you have unless you really have to get on it. Now when getting a higher stall converter, uh, you are going to lose traction a lot easier. Uh, if you floor from a dead stop, you're going to spin the tires. So that is one thing you got to keep in mind if your vehicle is two-wheel drive, whether or not you really want traction or not. Obviously you get a different size tire, different compound, you know, that'll do, but depending on the tire, you're not gonna have traction. I have four-wheel drive, so I really didn't worry about traction too much um, I can't launch into wheel drive in my truck. It'll just spin uh, the four-wheel drive launches is very good uh, But other than that, yeah, that is one thing to look into as well is the wheel spin one of the cons as well with the high stall torque converter is that it will heat up your tranny fluid and It will quite a bit so if you put let's say a 3400 stall converter in your transmission and you don't add another tranny cooler or a bigger one you're gonna burn up your transmission and really quick especially one day if you're in the summertime you're in traffic or you're just romping on it a little bit it's gonna get hot real quick and you typically want your temperatures for your transmission as cold as possible typically under 180 degrees so Definitely get something suitable for the size torque converter you have as far as cooling the tranny. In my opinion, you can never go too big with the tranny cooler, but it just depends on your budget. And uh, as long as it keeps it under 180 and barely goes over 200, you should be in the clear. So I think that covers all the bad news to it. There's really no, not much bad news or cons to a high stall torque converter. Uh, I will get into the good news. Uh, so the good news, if you you know, put a bigger cam in your engine, or you uh, boosting it through a turbo, or a supercharger, whatever, you can get your stall speed up uh, by foot braking it, and you can do some pretty good launches. And so when you put a bigger camshaft in an engine, obviously it raises the power band and the RPMs. Um, 
So whenever you put a really hefty camshaft or even just a mild one, especially in my truck, a mild cam kind of destroyed the torque. A higher style torque converter is definitely going to help. It's going to put your engine in the power band when you need it. It's not going to lug at the low RPMs at all. It makes it, it really just wakes up the truck. Um, it does drive different, like I stated earlier, but in a good way. So whenever you need to go somewhere, you can go. It's not going to be lugging down low in the RPMs. And then finally, once you hit the power band, you go. No, this is, it goes. And with that being said, you could do gnarly burnouts on this thing. Uh, launching is really good. Uh, shoot, with this stall tour converter, I made another video on it. Uh, as far as the 0 to 60 in a four wheel drive launch and I got it down to like 5.4 seconds and so in the size truck I have only for a cam swap headers intake torque converter um, that's I, in my opinion that's pretty good it's not the fastest but it's decent also another good thing about it is that uh, if you do put a bigger cam in your car if you have the stock converter it's gonna push through or at least try to push through if you got a stoplight and uh, once you do the higher stall it's fine it's a lot looser so whenever you just press on the brakes it's not going to be surging it's not going to be chopping and causing you to go forward at the red light so to sum up all the negatives and hopefully i covered everything i was thinking of just because it's not scripted it is a looser converter and you will notice it when you're driving it definitely doesn't drive like stock of what people say it just doesn't it drives okay it's drivable but it's definitely not like stock um, you can lose gas mileage if you only do city driving uh, highway driving if you have a lockup converter it's it's the same it's not gonna do anything yeah it's gonna heat up your transmission quite a bit so you do need a tranny cooler and other than that you can you start to lose traction uh, there's a limitation on your tires obviously so depending on what you get how aggressive you get it you're not gonna be able to hook as a, from a dig unless you obviously change your tires and stuff but other than that I mean that's all the negatives of it I can think of to sum up the positives yeah you get a faster acceleration by far drives a lot better even though it's different it's better for the good you get in that power band a lot quicker if not instantaneously whenever you floor it uh, from a standstill and it's all around just wakes up the vehicle makes it more fun to drive and you know I would 100% recommend one if you can afford it because they are a little expensive for what they do but the whole performance gain you get out of your whole vehicle is pretty good um, there's a ton of videos out there for torque converters but in my opinion there's not too many videos about people recommending torque converters because I've never driven one before uh, this truck I've never driven in anything with a loose converter and what people are saying it drives like stock or drives like ass you know it just kind of depends on what you get I when I first got the uh, torque converter my old one the TCI uh, I'm not saying I did it wrong I just wish I would have gotten a higher stall to begin with um, that torque converter ended up breaking unfortunately but um, the second go around when I got a new one I went ahead and got it from Circle D and it's fully it's a custom torque converter I told them exactly what I had the vehicle the mods what I plan to do in the future and I told them right around what I was thinking as far as the stall range and they basically agreed and I got it made and so I feel like I do have a torque converter suitable for my truck as far as the moment now each vehicle is going to be different uh, whether the vehicle weight and all that so maybe a 3400 stall in my truck is going to be different if you go and put it in let's say a Camaro uh, there's a lot of different variables so that's why you should just get it custom for your vehicle I'm definitely not a torque converter expert uh, I've dabbled in watching a lot of YouTube videos about it and different forums so I kind of know how they work how they feel how they're supposed to work what they're supposed to do um, so this is just kind of I guess my information to you um, I would definitely recommend doing more research before you make this purchase because it is a pretty expensive purchase and definitely make sure you're making the right purchase as well so yeah in this video take everything with a grain of salt and hopefully I will be producing another video next week so I'll see y'all then thank you